Hi everyone, my name is Sam and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about why rain barrels are important and how to build your own rain barrel. To tell you a little bit about me before we begin, I am a watershed ambassador hosted out of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. This is an AmeriCorps program and while AmeriCorps programs can be focused on a variety of topics from poverty to hunger, health and more, my program is focused on the environment. This is the 20th year that there have been watershed ambassadors in New Jersey, and for the past 20 years, ambassadors have strived to foster environmental stewardship through community outreach and events, habitat and biological stream assessments, and educational presentations. To start, I should tell you what a rain barrel actually is. A rain barrel is a water tank that collects and stores rainwater runoff. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, depending on homeowner preference. So why should you own a rain barrel? Well, they help you live more sustainably. Sustainability is the avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain ecological balance for future generations. They also help reduce stormwater runoff and thus flooding, as well as help control water pollution, which I'll go over later in this video. Remember when I described sustainability? Well, the reason why rain barrels are sustainable is because they help you harvest rainwater that would otherwise be wasted or go unused. As an example of how much water is wasted without a rain barrel, if your roof was 800 feet squared and we had one normal rainfall event, which for New Jersey is about one inch per rainfall, you could collect 500 gallons of water. You would need about 10 55 gallon rain barrels to collect all that water. If you took in the entire year, you could save about 26,000 gallons of water based on the average rainfall in New Jersey from the 2019 data. Most people do not own 10 rain barrels, however, but if you have just one rain barrel, you will still be able to save about 1,400 gallons of water a year. There are also a lot of other ways you can conserve water inside and outside your home. And while I won't be going through all of them, you can learn a lot about your options through some light research online. Another reason why rain barrels are so awesome is that they reduce storm water. Stormwater is all the water that originates from a weather event, including rainwater and snow and ice melt. Because rain barrels collect rainwater, they help reduce stormwater, which can help reduce flooding. If you remember that one rainfall event can yield 500 gallons of rainwater from one home, imagine a whole neighborhood's worth of homes. If every one of those homes had a rain barrel, hundreds or thousands of gallons of stormwater could be reduced, which could help prevent or reduce flooding. Because rain barrels help reduce stormwater, they also help to reduce non-point source pollution. Non-point source pollution includes the forms of pollution where we can't determine the source of that pollution. Every time it rains, these forms of pollution all get caught in the rain and end up in our local water bodies, like the Atlantic Ocean and the Delaware River. So by owning a rain barrel, you are not only saving water and reducing flooding, but you are helping to prevent these forms of pollution from entering our water bodies. Now that we've gone over all the reasons why you should own a rain barrel to help our planet, they can also help you individually. Rain barrel water is useful for many things around the house. Rainwater is actually better for your plants because it doesn't contain chlorine and its slightly acidic pH assists in nutrient availability. Just make sure to use the water within two weeks to discourage the growth of algae, especially if you keep your barrel in a sunny location. And if you know that you will be having a rainstorm, try to use the water in your barrel before that happens. While there are a lot of amazing uses for rain barrel water, you should not cook with it or drink it. While bird poop is something that a garden won't mind, you don't want to be drinking bird poop. Your roof contains bacteria and chemicals that could be dangerous to your health. It is also not recommended to use the water on a garden where you will be consuming the products unless you have the water tested. You should also not use a rain barrel at all if you use moss killer or other herbicides on your roof because any water collected could kill your garden or your lawn. Now we're going to talk about how you can actually build your own rain barrel. These are all the supplies you will need to build the type of barrel that I will be describing. You will also need an actual barrel. If you are participating in a rain barrel workshop with the Watershed Ambassador Program, the barrel will most likely be provided during the workshop along with the rest of the parts. But if you are taking on this project on your own, make sure the barrel you get is food grade. It should have not been used to store chemicals or fuel, even if it has been washed. We also use 55 gallon barrels, but you could adjust your rain barrel parts if you get a barrel of a different size. If you plan to decorate and paint your barrel, you will need the following supplies. You'll start by sanding off the waxy outer coating of the barrel and then painting it with paint primer. Once the primer has dried, you can use acrylic paint to decorate your barrel any way you want. 
Remember that your barrel will be outside, so any decorating supplies should be weatherproof and labeled for use outside. Now I'm going to talk about how we actually construct a rain barrel. The first step is to make sure you have your safety glasses on before you start any drilling. It's also advised to wear them if you plan to sand down your barrel. You don't want any pieces of plastic or particulars getting in your eyes. First, we will use a jigsaw to remove the top of the barrel. Make sure you have people to help steady the barrel who are wearing their safety glasses. You'll want to do all drilling somewhere where you can clean up the pieces of collected plastic, like on a tarp on the ground outside or on a floor inside that can be swept up. To drill the overflow and faucet holes, you'll need at least two people. You'll want to lay the barrel on its side and one person will hold the barrel steady while the other person drills the holes. Make sure to avoid the seams of the barrel and to think about where the faucet and overflow holes will be. You don't want to drill the overflow hole so it faces your home. I recommend placing the overflow and faucet holes on the same side of the barrel like the green dots in this picture. You may need to wash the inside of the barrel depending on where you got it to make sure you get any food or syrup residues out. This step is easier to do after you have removed the top of the barrel, but depending on the type of barrel you have, it can be done before drilling. Make sure to clean up any pieces of plastic after washing or drilling, especially if you are outside. The first part that we are going to install is the faucet. Creating a good seal is very important for making sure the barrel does not leak. You will wrap thread seal tape around the faucet to cover all the grooves and then using your gloves, spread caulk around the tape. Keep the faucet straight as you screw it into the hole towards the bottom of the barrel. This is harder than it looks and wearing gloves can help. Have a helper to hold the barrel still and watch to see that the faucet is going in straight. For this step, someone will have to either reach inside or crawl inside to screw the lock nut to the back of the faucet. Kids love this job because they often fit inside the barrels. To prepare the hose adapter, we will follow the same steps as for the faucet. Make sure to put the tape on the side that goes into the actual barrel. You can tell because it's the side where the grooves are closer together and there are more of them, like the picture to the left. The hose adapter screws into the hole near the top of the barrel to act as the overflow outlet, and it might be tricky to screw in, so you might need pliers or a wrench for this step. You're going to attach the second lock nut the same way you did for the faucet, but because the overflow hole is closer to the top, you probably won't need to crawl inside. To finish up the faucet and the overflow, you will need to spread more caulk around the inside and outside of both the faucet and the hose adapter. This ensures a good seal. To attach the screen, you can either pre-measure out a square of fiberglass mesh or cut from a roll. You may need a few people to help with this step, but you will want to stretch the screen over the top of the barrel as taut as you can and secure it with a bungee cord. You can also use multiple smaller bungee cords if that is what you have. Once the screen is secure, you can trim off extra, but remember that you will have to remove the screen to care for your barrel. If you plan on painting your rain barrel, you will want to either do it before or after you've installed any of the parts, but please make sure that everything has dried for the right amount of time. Primer and caulk both can take a long time to dry, so please plan accordingly. To install your rain barrel outside, you will want to first locate the downspout you'll be using and make sure the area underneath is flat which can be done by leveling the ground or adding sand or gravel. You don't want the barrel to tip over because when it's filled with water, it'll be really heavy and you don't want to injure anybody or anything around it. Next, you will want to create a raised level for the barrel to sit on, which can be made from bricks, cinder blocks, or pressure treated wood. This is to make it easier to access the faucet. To prepare the downspout for the barrel, you will want to measure the twice, but cut once. The downspout should reach the top of your barrel instead of close to the ground. Make sure to place something behind the spout while you cut to protect your house and to save the cut piece of the downspout for when you are not using the rain barrel. After cutting the downspout, place your rain barrel under the spout and attach the curved downspout end piece over the downspout. If it doesn't fit well, you can use pliers to bend the downspout edges so the elbow piece can slip over it. Then you attach the downspout strap so the elbow piece is secured in place. You don't want to install your rain barrel without a garden hose. The open overflow hole will allow mosquitoes in. Direct your garden hose to a garden area lawn or some distant runoff area away from the house. The last step is to protect further against mosquitoes. Mosquito dunk prevents mosquito larvae and is available in local hardware stores and home centers. Also, two tablespoons of vegetable oil breaks the surface tension so mosquitoes cannot land on the water. Congratulations! You have successfully created and placed your rain barrel. 
To take care of your rain barrel, make sure to check on it and remove any debris. You will need to disconnect the barrel during winter months to prevent damage and it's a good idea to clean the barrel before you put it away to make sure that it is ready when you take it back out in the spring. Remember when we talked about how much water could be recovered from your roof with one rain barrel? You can collect even more water if you attach the overflow of one barrel to another and another and so forth. Just make sure you have a use for all that water. I want to thank everyone for listening and I hope you all learned a lot about rain barrels. If you loved this video and want to learn more about other watershed topics, you can visit us on social media or on our website. Thank you.